Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Triumph After Trauma. I'm your host, Jordan Elise, and I'm here today with Savava Brooks. So if you don't know Savava Brooks, um, we are so excited to have her. She herself is a survivor of childhood sexual abuse, so she's here to speak from her own experience. But importantly to you guys, she's an incredible advocate for our community. Um, she's a co-founder of a nationwide program in Iceland that is for sexual um, childhood sexual abuse prevention and education. It's, it's seen incredible success rates, so Savava, I can't wait to dive into that with you. In addition, she's a certified instructor and facilitator um, of darkness to light for stewards of children. She's a certified TRE provider. And for those of you listening, TRE um, it means tension and trauma release exercises. And she's an abuse coach um, and more. So Savava, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Jordan. I'm just excited to be here with you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And so today we are here to talk about living from the heart and not the hurt. So as a survivor myself, and you can speak to your experiences, it can be so easy, not easy, but but so um, autopilot to really live in a place coming from our trauma and coming from our hurt. And so you're here today to talk about ways that we can really shift back into living from the heart. Absolutely. And, and talking about the heart is really my favorite topic and <clears throat> really what I think I, I help um, my clients with today um, is that how do we live from the heart because that hurt that we struggle with or experience often as children or later in life really disconnects us from our hearts. Yeah. Um, so the healing journey is all about coming back to the heart and that is through whatever means necessary to really learn to love yourself and really nurture yourself. So, I love that. So I would love to hear a little bit more about your personal story, your experiences and how you healed your own heart. Thank you. Well, it's been, um, as we're coming to an end of this year, I, I always kind of look back, it's been like 27 years of my healing journey. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, I am a survivor of physical, emotional, and childhood sexual abuse, and basically started, I have memories as young as four, but I know the person that abused me came into my life when I was two years old, so mm -hmm. possibly happened sooner, but to kind of sum up the impact of it, is that I never went to bed feeling safe in my house my whole childhood. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea really the, the, the devastating impact that had on me, my emotional, mental, uh, physical health until I started my healing journey. So born and raised in Iceland, as you alluded to earlier, I'm now coming to you from Portland, Oregon. Um, but basically I, I, um, left Iceland and came to the States to go to college all those years ago. And I thought I left all my troubles behind because uh, I had really survived my, my uh, childhood by being a little Miss Perfect. That was my, you know, overachieving. I was a straight A student. I was a, a really good athlete. Um, I did modeling, you know, everything that made it look super great on the outside. But inside, I was really, really devastated and really, really struggling. And so it really wasn't until I started my healing journey. And I think it was because I was so far away from Iceland in California. I came all the way to California that, you know, my memories and not necessarily memories. I always knew what had happened, but it kind of just kind of lived on the side here. But then the physical things, the physical symptoms really mm -hmm. started to, to become, uh, get to the point that I couldn't avoid them anymore. I started having massive cramps, internal bleeding, massive headaches. Um, so that was what really kind of caught my attention. But um, I still, even though I managed to play a little Miss Perfect my whole childhood, mm -hmm. I still acted out a lot. And people just weren't listening. People weren't paying attention. I mean, also back then, I mean, I was started smoking when I was 12. Nicotine yeah. is a powerful antidepressant. Mm -hmm. And I started drinking pretty heavily, 16 years old. Um, you know, was promiscuous and like I said, um, self-harming and people just weren't paying attention. And that was really the drive for starting the nonprofit 
um, 10 years into my healing and I was blessed that I found a support group early in my healing journey. And that's why I'm a huge fan of support groups talking about it, right? And so I run online support groups and in person and have done that for a long time. And so it was in that support group after 10 years of healing, both in support group and therapy. And I immediately started doing all kinds of alternative, you know, energy work and Reiki. And so I'm a Reiki practitioner now as well, because it was such a deep, um, important tool for myself. But 10 years into my healing, I recognized if there had been helpful adults around me that had known what the signs were or would have had the courage to talk about it, even teachers at school, I don't think I would have waited until I was 27 years old to start my healing. So um, I started looking and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Just this, you know, really felt this really big mission from my heart. And so it was when I saw a survivor on Oprah all those years ago. And I can still remember that I was nursing my baby son at the time. He's 16 today. And was when I saw this woman on Oprah telling her story of childhood sexual abuse, it was like the permission that I needed. So with that, I found some information that I took to Iceland and we found a little booklet of information for adults to how to start talking about it with other adults and how to age appropriately talk to your kids about it. And with that was kind of how my public speaking career started because we sent that booklet into every single home in the country. Wow. And people started calling me and say, hey, you're telling us to talk about it, but nobody wants to talk about it. Can you come talk about it? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's basically how my uh, you know, prevention education piece started. And I've been doing that for 15 years and uh, represent uh, an organization here as a as an independent contractor, darkness to light, and I train instructors and facilitators for them as well. And then what started to happen is that survivors started seeing me and hearing me speak, and they started coming to me. It's like, oh, how can you talk about this? Like, so straightforward. Mm -hmm. And um, and basically, I, I recognized once I started talking about it, how many survivors were in the room. And even the people that I thought were the experts were just as uncomfortable talking about it as the person that I knew was the survivor in the room. Um, so it really, you know, I kind of armed myself with compassion for people because I was very angry in the beginning. It's like, why aren't we all just in outrage, right? We know the statistics, one of every four girls, one in every six boys. And in any group classroom of kids, do the math. Uh, there are kids that are either are or have been abused. So, um, so my train of thought just left here without me right now. But I um, basically, you know, also started to recognize the need for survivors to come together. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, if I was like, uh, I spent my many years in San Diego, there was no local support groups. So I was like, okay, I'll start one. I'm comfortable talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> so. And so I did that for many, many years. And, you know, it's like three Saturdays a month. Um, it, the word slowly got out and I was I partnered up with um, one of the local crisis centers there and hosted a group. And it was basically just holding a safe space for people mm -hmm. just to come and be together for so many years. Right. We think we're, we're alone um, and that, you know, that this only happened to us. I mean, that's what trauma does. It yeah. just disconnects you so much from reality and the truth that you think it was your fault, that you did something wrong, there must be something inherently wrong with you. I mean, that's what shame feeds on in our, inside our psyche and our bodies for so long. Um, so yeah, it's, I've been talking about it for a long time now. And, uh, and that's why I do a YouTube channel now. I go live twice a week where I talk about it because I think it's to normalize the conversation, um, uh, honor your pace, honor your timing, honor your body and, you know, where you're at, but whatever you can do to surround yourself with people that are talking about it. And yes, talking about the past, the hurt, but talk about how do we reconnect with our hearts? Because that's really ultimately where our authentic self lives. And that's one mm -hmm. of my workbooks that I've, that I've written and support my readers online with, um, every week. Yeah. To, come back to the truth of who we are is that you are and just you here Jordan a beautiful spark of light that's on a mission 
to get a very important message out to a lot of people. So I'm going to pause here for a second. I've, I'll get off my soapbox, but I want to celebrate you because you're going to help countless people. So thank you. Thank you so much. And for all of you listening out there, if you feel like you have an inner knowing that you're meant to share your story or you're meant to use your, your voice to, to speak out about your own experience to help others, it really does make an impact. And so, Savava, I love how you focus on the support group element and the community aspect of it because that all ties into that education and prevention that you're, that you're doing. So, um, Thank you for your work, first and foremost. Um, I would love for you to share a little bit about the, the statistics about how effective your Straight Talk program has been in Iceland. Sure. Thank you. I'm yeah. very proud of that. And I, I just also wanted to tell you that I've stepped away from that nonprofit now. I found after you know, 15 years of doing something and um, it's time to move on. And I yeah. trust that I set the foundation for the work that c continues in Iceland. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as a, as a result of the work there for the first 10 years, we, we'd educated 10% of the population. Uh, so we had uh, a talk for adults. Yeah. Um, and so we, and we also had a program for teenagers and then we had a puppet show for children. So for a age appropriate conversation at all stages of development, really. And so the result was that the reporting of child sexual abuse in the beginning was up 30%. That's amazing. So, yes. And yeah. guys listening, like this yeah. is just because of having a conversation. And so imagine if we all come together in this wonderful community that we're working to build that Savava has, you know, started pioneering 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago. If we all come out and do that, imagine what that can create in the U.S. and the U.K. beyond. I, I just think that's so incredible. Yeah, and, and, and thank you for bringing uh, some attention to that because, you know, I do get e emails from a lot of survivors, like, I want to do something. What do I do? So if, if that's you, someone listening to this, I'm, I'm happy to, to give you some, some feedback on what are some things that you can do. You don't have to be a PhD expert, right? Uh, you, you know enough. And if you have the heart and the passion and the drive, Mm -hmm. um, then there is absolutely space for you and we need you, right? We need you. And actually, uh, I just, um, my oldest daughter is 26 and she actually became a facilitator this past year. So instead of passing down trauma in my family, I've actually passed down advocacy and trauma informed family conversation. And now she's standing out there as a mom of someone that was traumatized and because of my trauma she's had to do some healing because that tension in my body shows up in her body today mm -hmm. um so she is doing her own work but also is feels very empowered to be a part of um changing the legacy of you know for so many of us trauma is multi-generational it didn't just start with us so. Yeah. So what, what advice would you give to, to people listening in right now that are one looking to break that intergenerational trauma, really break the cycle. And then two, like, where do they start for the, the healing of their heart? You know, that's central to what you do and central to your mission. So I'd like to dive a bit deeper into that. Sure. And, and I'm so glad that you are making that point because that is one of the hardest things that we do as survivors, right? If you're going to be out there speaking about it, mm -hmm. we really need to take really, really, really good care of ourselves. Yeah. Um, and for so many of us, we have survived by being kind of, we focus outwards, we make other people happy, we take care of other people, we make, every, make sure everybody else is okay, but at our own expense. Like we're usually the last one on our own list. But today I live with I'm like the top two, three, four items on my to-do list is me, right? So just coming out of, just waking up, right? This is how I every day live from the heart and not my hurt. Even just waking up, I put my hand on my heart. And that's one of the tips that I share in my free gift with everybody is that just placing your hand on your heart for a few minutes. And for some of us, it's uncomfortable. If we are, if you, love isn't safe, if love doesn't feel comfortable, this may not feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then I give myself a few deep breaths just to allow myself to really pull in. <sighs> right? And release and relax. And it's that exhale that helps us to relax. 
Most of us don't breathe past our chest mm -hmm. at all. And then I remind myself, you know, hey, sweet body, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Because this body was neglected and hated for a long time. Most of my abuse, I left my body. I floated up in the ceiling. I wasn't even in my body, which is the survival strategy. And I thought I was crazy. I thought people would lock me up if I told them about it. Once I recognized how common that was, but then the journey to come to my body was because I was used to living here, fighting for life and the hurt every day. I had to go ever so slowly, right? Because we naturally do this to protect ourselves. Your body and your brain is hardwired to protect you. So this gives, actually sends, you know, oxytocin, the feel good hormones to your body that slowly helps your body to relax. And for so many people would tell me, oh, you just need to be nicer to yourself. I'm like, what does that look like? What does that feel like? I didn't know what loving Svava felt like. Yeah. But now I do. Giving myself warmth, your body understands warmth. And then notice the tone of my inner critic that has been running rampant my life, like telling me I'm a piece of shit and good for nothing, right? Yeah. Now I'm like, hey, I got this. I know why you're here to protect me, but I'm the parent and the protector that I need it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so even starting my day, this is it. I love that. So what I'm hearing though is that it's not just your heart. It's also your body and you need your body to heal because of the trauma stored within it. What, so in addition to these exercises, is there anything else that survivors can do to be empowered to, to re-embrace their body? I think start where you're at and start with every little bit that you can do to take care of your body. The most important part of self-care is the caring, the heart part. Because yeah. if you, if, you know, no one else out here can crawl inside of you and really show you how to care for you, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. it's too late, right? I, I can't, my mom can't reparent me. My mom can't show me the loving care that I desperately needed as a little girl. But I can do that now and I can hold myself in that today. And so I'm a big fan of, of inner child work too, but start with a little bit of self-care. If it's eating better, exercise, even just go to the, walk to the end of the block and back. You have done something to shift your energy. And when we shift our energy inside where our heart lives, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Then that also is, you know, what we lead with you know, going outward. So now, like I said earlier, I lead with my heart into the day of intention, knowing I know that I'm loved because mm -hmm. I love me. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then, so for those listening who feel like, yeah, okay, this sounds great, but I, I feel like I'm too far gone or I don't think, I don't know if this will work for me and I, or I'm not sure if I can heal. What words of advice do you have for those people? Um, it's never too late to start. And I can tell you, your body, you know, is always fighting for optimal health, optimal wellness. The hardest part is that, right, our hurt gets in the way, mm -hmm. but the same part of you that is doing, that is kind of recycling the hurt that's the same part of your biology that also is hardwired with learning how to nurture. It's just to take it down from going down that path to choosing. And that's why I said, if you just start today with just like hand on your heart for 30 seconds, you know, every little bit, every day counts. And I mean, that's how I learned to feel warmth and love and appreciation for my body that has been through so much. And the worst of what it went through, I did to myself because mm -hmm. I didn't know that I, I had picked up where other people left off. But now that I've stopped that, mm -hmm. I'm like, nope, I got this. I got this. And it's about really, for me, at least in my journey, it was about taking responsibility for how I was going to treat my body moving forward and not engage in some of those self-harm practices. For me, it was alcohol, drugs, partying, promiscuous, 
promiscuity or however you say yes. that. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and there was so much guilt and shame associated with the kind of self harm that came after the abuse period and just really learning like, you know, to take accountability and responsibility in a non blaming, non shaming, non guilty way. Exactly. And that's again, where support groups are powerful because mm -hmm. we don't know what that looks like right? Until we see and hear other people do it. Yeah. I had no idea. So support groups, you heal faster. Trauma healing can take between three to five years, maybe even seven years. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you consistently hang out with people that are focusing on healing, you know, from this day forward, what are the active steps that I'm taking to, to living from my heart to self-care? taking responsibility, not blame, but taking back your power, the authority you have over living your own life, right? Choosing your energy, you know, you will heal faster. I've seen it countless times and I've seen it in my own life too. I've experienced it. I went my healing journey literally eight years alone by myself going to therapy. And then finally I reached a point where I felt like I kind of just plateaued and I was like, I need more. Um, I need alternate ways of healing. And so dove into a community of other survivors and it was just the most beautiful experience. And within six months, literally just six months, I felt like I had, you know, my, my healing was at a point where I, it was facilitated so much more quickly than I could have ever anticipated. And it really helped me get over that hump and then also realize the potential that my story could have if I shared it. So in that group, even I was seeing how sharing my story was helping others. And it's so empowering to, to have that community. Yeah, exactly. Because we've, we've, you know, trauma, you just live inside of it and you're living out of it. So you don't know what living from the heart you you may understand it here but you don't know how to really embody it to live out of it right yeah. and that's where you know like this was the first book that i wrote journey to the heart it yeah. was again the the workbook that i was looking for when i realized i had to be the one my morning routine to start with choosing me every yeah. single day i'm starting by choosing me how I'm going to live. Because if I'm not choosing, guess what? Your biology, your nervous system, always in service of survival will be by default going back to your old ways. Yeah. And our old ways aren't helpful today. They may have helped in the past when you were a child, but they don't today. And they get in the way of us having the loving, connected relationships that we really do want that help us thrive. So, so uh. you can do this. Yes. You already have everything that you need right here, right there. You have the complete package to do though, to do this. Oh my gosh. So many words of wisdom. Um, is there anything else that you'd love to share with the audience before, before I offer the, the free, amazing, generous gift that you have for them? Um, I, I think I've covered all of it, but just, you know, one of the things that I think is important for all of us is that when we're looking for support is that find you know, the person to support you that believes in you. Um, and I know that I hold that space for so many of my clients and the people in my groups, because for a long time, I didn't believe in me. And I found someone that was like, Slava, even when I was at my worst, you know, when I was acting out, um, they still like, no matter what you do or say, I still believe in you. I still love you. I'm still committed to this journey. Find someone that is that committed to your healing and you'll know it in your heart of hearts when you find that person or that community or tribe or circle, right? Yeah. But give yourself that gift. If there is a doubt, you know, sometimes belonging is hard for us because we will, we will push on that, right? If we we want to lone wolf it. It's a protection thing. It's a defense it thing. Yeah, it is. It is. But do yourself um, that favor of, you know, be willing. And I say willingness is courage undercover. So I love that. just start with, okay, I may not know how this is going to play out and I'm scared, right? To yeah. whatever, but I'm, I'm willing to consider, I'm willing to lean into this a little bit and see where it takes me. So with that, and I, I would, I celebrate anybody that chooses that journey. It is hard, but you can do it and it is worth it. 
Yes. And Savava and I are both here as we both create space for our clients. There are countless of other individuals um, that serve as abuse survivor coaches as well. And so I promise you there are others out there that are more than willing and eager and excited to support you in this journey. Um, so with that said, Savava, thank you so much for, for being here. You also are so generous. You're providing the audience with a free guide to self-compassion. Um, and this is a daily guide that helps you really nurture that living from the heart that we've been talking about. Um, and so in addition to talking about like the three elements of self-compassion, it also dives into what self-compassion looks and feels like for those of you who are just getting started on this journey of self-compassion. And then for those of you that are already practicing self-compassion, amazing. But this guide also gives you an at-home exercise to, to take you deeper into that journey and a guided meditation by Savava herself um, to elevate your practice. So it's a really incredible resource. Thank you so much for providing it, especially for this audience. And I encourage everyone to take full advantage and download, um, download below and, and sign up. So thank you, Savava, for your time and your heart and your, your willingness to share um, with this community. Thank you so much for having me. I really <clears throat> appreciate it. And I really appreciate what you're doing because you have no idea how many people's lives you're going to impact and change. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay. Bye, everyone. I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow.